Hey gamers, if you're anything like me, you're shit at the shatters. But I'm gonna tell you what, it's not as bad as you think it is. It's winnable. It may be the hardest dungeon in the game by far with the most insta-kills, but it's also the best dungeon in the game. No cap. Give it a chance and watch this guide to figure out how to live in the shitters. Alright, from the moment you enter, you're gonna notice everything wants to kill you. Like, really hard. Everything wants to just... Oh! Kill you really good. Don't let that happen. Stay with the group. Find the nearest fungal tome. Find the nearest paladin. Make them your best friend. Give them a speed pot bribe. Get them on your side. Follow them. Lock them. Drip down inside of them. That didn't make sense. Cut that. Um, look... The rushers, assuming you have rushers, are going to do their job. Stay with the group. Keep the group safe. Maybe find a monument or two on your own. Be on the lookout for people trying to do hard mode. And tell them to take the L. Because you're here for your first complete. Now before you even enter the shatters, you need to think about what class you're playing. And before you say, Wizard! Sork! No, shut the fuck up. You're a noob. You have no reason to play that. Play Necro, play Priest, play Paladin. Ooh, what a good idea. Play the classes that will make you survive. It's almost like it makes sense and you should do it. Now you've made it through the village, the rushers have carried you. Thank them in chat with a TY and a little heart. You're at the first boss. What can this guy do that can kill you? Well, a few things. He can pogo stick you to death. Look, if you're melee, don't even try to hit him here. That's not even just my advice. That's advice from a lot of Shatters veterans. Don't even fucking try to hit him if you're melee. Especially if you're going for that first complete. Range, keep your distance. He can do a lot of bullshit while he's pogo sticking. The next thing he can do is turn into a Beyblade and run you the fuck over. You want to stay in front of him in this phase. It's kind of obvious, but... You want to try to hit him and do your damage while you can. Anyway, it's not about damage, it's about surviving. Run away! Every phase, just run away, don't even look at him. Then he's going to throw some swords at you, maybe. Try not to take all of the swords in the dome. You'll probably die. I get really lucky here. I'm kind of stupid for this one, but it happens. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. That's why you'll be on a better class than the summoner, right? For survival, right? Um, last thing you need to know, well, not last thing, there's blobs, and the blobs will one-shot you. If you see blobs, change your pattern. If you are moving away from the blobs and the boss tries to pogo stick you or run you over, that's a nexus. Just take the nexus, go again next time, it's better than dying. You're gonna want a nexus a few times here. There are a lot of people that say the first boss is one of the hardest. Once you learn the dungeon, because it's the most unpredictable, kind of. Which is, you know, part of it makes sense. There's a lot of bullshit in this boss. But that's going to be a recurring theme here. He has a rage phase that you're probably not going to skip. Because you don't even know what that means. I'm not here to tell you what that means. I'm here to tell you how to live. Run. In the rage phase, something changes. He unlocks a new Ultra Beyblade technique. All this is, is you just want to stay away from the walls. He can't even shoot in the middle while he's using this one move. Now don't sue me. If you die to something while he's doing this, it's probably going to be a blob. Just stay away from the walls and you're good. Watch out if he changes phases. Next, the worst part of the dungeon. The second clear. You're going to need to work with the group once again. Someone's probably making the decisions of what areas to go to. If they go to a moon, go somewhere else. They're doing a puzzle. You're just going to ruin the puzzle. I, I've i seen Discord groups sit at puzzle room for like 10 minutes just because people are dumb. And they're not even trolling. They just They're just trying to help. They're trying to do their best. I can't beat the puzzle. That's the hardest part of the dungeon. Watch out. There's a lot of bullshit minions. They're gonna they're gonna poop on you. They're so bad. Some of them. People die every every run. 8-8s lose their lives. B 
because they sleep on these minions. Don't be those guys and or girls. Just don't get wrecked. You finally made it to second and it only took 10 hours of clearing. Thank you, toasters. It's time for probably the biggest roadblock in your realm life, the second boss. Every phase here can frick you if you're not careful. But there are some that can frick you harder than others. These phases usually involve bombs and standing on bombs and getting blown up by those bombs. I have a pro tip for you that you're never gonna guess. Don't stand on bombs. Thank you for coming to my TED talk, bombs are bad. There are things that will one shot you here. They're all circle shaped. The ice shit, the fire shit, the bombs, the birds kind of are circular. You know what, the birds aren't circular. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of shit on your screen at all times. How to do some of these phases. I'm sure you've seen, you know, some good things happening, some bad things happening on your screen here. Just, you know, do what I'm doing. Is that a good guide? No, but shut up, keep watching. <sighs> All right, now that you've done damage to the boss, he's gonna poop out some birds. You need to hit the birds. You can't not hit the birds. You can't damage the boss. Shoot the birds, the birds aren't real. Okay, thanks Shane. That was Shane with the guide. Shoot the birds or you can't hit the boss. So like, dodge too. Good job. Next, he's gonna do some finale shit. You ever go to a fireworks show and your drunk uncle spent like $4,000 on the, the fireworks for it and he leaves most of it in a box at the end and then your other drunk uncle just lights that whole box on fire without setting it up right and everything's just exploding and fucking shit up? No? Okay, I guess you've never been to Florida. But here's where shit's gonna look crazy, man. It's gonna go, whoa! You're gonna be, whoa! If the game works as intended, you're gonna have to do a lot of dodging. Don't freak out. Ice Finale's not that bad. You can survive this on your intuition. Just don't get popped by the Firebird at the start of Ice Finale. You can tell what finale it's gonna be based on how many generators there are. If there's two ice, it's gonna be ice. If there's two fire, it's gonna be fire. If there's two fire and two ice, you're in hard mode and you need to get the fuck out of there right now. You're not supposed to be there, run. Anyway, fire finale, predictable. There's a pattern here. If you are mathematical and can count to three, you will start on the third ring of fire then you will go to the first. He will then shoot bombs at you, and you wanna go back to the third ring of fire, but move to the left or the right. I usually hug the left, and it's just a three, one, three, one pattern. Every time, unless there's a bomb there, then you go to somewhere else. But you can keep the three, one pattern because there will not be rings on those numbers. Does this make sense? It hopefully does. If it doesn't watch this section again, you might get it. The ice finale. Once again, just go ultra instinct. Do not stand on a bomb. Find your nearest fungal tome and start sucking. And you win. Now my favorite part of the finales is when a deck of games moment happens and you DC, which happened to me twice in a row yesterday. But we don't talk about that. You've survived the second boss and are moving into the murder room. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. This is the most bullshit room in the fucking game. Everything one-shots you so hard. My best advice to you, once again, run. Just kidding. You have to fight. There's no fight or flight. Don't be a poo-poo pussy loser. Don't do that. Be a man or a woman, be a gamer, shoot shit, kill the minions, you're gonna have an easier time. These tablets can give you pretty cool white bags and or a forgotten ring that you can show off. You can finally have Riz, you can finally get Maidens if you get some of the cool shit that drops here. 
but everything wants to fucking one-shot you. Shout out to the guy on the horse that wants to one-shot you. Shout out to the guy that shoots his axes out that kills you within like two seconds. Actually, less than that. Everything here kills you within one second if you are caught in its shot. And or skull that's flying right at you at a million miles per hour. You need to have your finger on the Nexus key. You need to have your finger on your health pots. And you need to have your fingers in your ass or you're going to have a bad time. Congratulations, after hitting five tablets and running and screaming and crying, you survived the murder room. Get ready for probably the easiest boss in the whole game. Just kidding. Get ready for the Fergor King. Ah! All right, Fergor King time. He has different phases. None of them matter because you're gonna be running away. If you want your first complete, you know what to do, okay? Find the priest, find the paladin, start running. Just kidding, stay with the group. He's gonna do some bullshit. He's not as dangerous as all that shit on your screen. There's orange crystals, which are the most bastard thing in this whole game, no cap. These have a million ways to kill you and fuck you. God forbid he does one of his carousel rotation phases that he loves to use. It's gonna suck, it's gonna be rough. He um, has two different carousel phases, one of them being thin carousels, one of them being wide and thick and big and chunky. If it's thin, you can actually sit in any of the four corners of the room as a safe spot, unless he comes and sits on your face, so be ready for that. If it's the wide ones, oh man, you're fucked. Do rotations on the middle circle. If you are on the outer circle, that orange crystal will unluckily one-pop you. I've had a lot of deaths that way. You will get one-shotted, believe me. The first part of the king is the hardest, no cap. Once you make it past this first part, it's a little bit easier. But you're gonna have to look at a clock for inspiration. A lot of people can't handle this part. A clock goes around like this. I don't know if my camera's mirrored. Just, if you're a zoomer, go Google clock. It goes to the, the right. Is this mirrored? I don't fucking know. Go clockwise when he turns into a big scary purple skull. Hopefully you've got some gamer dragging it. If you are standing still, you're gonna fuck shit up and people are gonna get mad at you and everyone's gonna go, ah! This time, the correct answer is literally run. Whether you're good or bad at the game, you do run in a circle. Do not get popped by the things on the ground that wanna explode. If the skull fucking yeets itself at you as it likes to do, consider a nexus. Unless you brought a priest, necro, or paladin, you'll probably be okay. After this shit, these phases may look scarier, but they're actually easier to do. There's one that you have to worry about in particular called Abyss. Now this phase, you really wanna stay with the group because if you run too far ahead of the group, you will be PVPing once again, people will get mad at you, they'll cry, um, you'll get kicked from your Discord, and everyone will hate you. Except, if you do it in like, a streamer run, we'll probably think you're pretty cool and funny. Nah, we'll, we'll still fucking hate. Just stay with the group. When he says, drag to the abyss. What can kill you? There's this one face that looks like Guitar Hero. This shit fucks. You need to just move back. You find the gap, you move back. Usually when you find a gap in life, you consensually penetrate that gap. Here you might have to back up first. So kind of like a thrusting moment where you move back and then you penetrate and you move back. And you know, it's just a beautiful act of nature, this phase. Thank you, Guitar Hero, for our thrusting motions. The king loves it, by the way. He, ooh, he the, he loves it, bro. <laughs> There's one where he's a pinwheel. And, you know, you just want to cross early. Don't get caught in the purple line. Don't be a hero. Just cross that shit early when you see the opening and watch out. Hopefully you have some range and you can still hit shit. Hopefully you're still useful to the team. Who cares if you're not? You're just here for your first complete. You're going to get fucked here. 
You have worked so hard to make it to this point, and you are doomed to fail. Nobody, and I mean nobody, makes it through their first patience. Unless you have some busted OP items, like the Curious, that shit, you're, you're gonna win patience probably. Just remember to shoot so you're in combat. With patience, you don't wanna move too much. Like, I know that sounds weird. You don't wanna move too much. Anyway, there is a, a pattern here. There's an infographic, if Meta decides to show it, where you start on the right, then you go left, then you go right again, and then it's over. Your job in patience, assuming there's at least four people, is to tank one of the thingies. The, ooh, the spooky thingies. If you're the closest player to it, it'll come towards you. Assuming nobody fucks you over, you only have to deal with one of them at a time. If somebody does fuck you over, then run around like a chicken cut off its head. You are able to heal through the sicken if you bring holy water or other cleansing items such as a nil drop. You have to use the nil drop or the holy water precisely 0.5 seconds before the health pot. So like a ba 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 like a double tap. If you do that, you will see plus 100s or plus 150s over your health bar. Obviously, pro tip, use an icker with the cleansing item to get the most healing or a greater pot if you are rich and you have those. Once patience ends, you, you basically beat the dungeon. Just stay calm, don't fuck up, and get your loot. This is the final boss of the game, patience phase. You can do it, it's gonna take a try or 10, but just be calm. My first time trying to get it complete, I don't know if patience was harder back in the day, but I would either die or nexus to patience, and it was so annoying. It was so annoying, man, to go through like 20 minutes of the dungeon back in the day just to have to nexus to the final boss after you had done the hard part. That shit sucks, but get used to it. Gear choice. Health and defense is your best friend. Defense matters so much in the shatters. There's tons of tiny bullets. It matters. If you happen to have a jug, a curious, an Oreo, a sea shield, any of these items, they will give you a good step forward to surviving. If you're a necromancer, bring your highest tiered skull and maybe a soulless robe, and you're gonna have a good time. Congratulations, you made it through patience. You now get your epic gamer loot. Good job, gamer, you did it. I knew you could. Wowee, you made it through. Now get ready for the hard mode of this dungeon. See you next time.